In this example, we are going to compute the power set for the set A. So here's the set A that we're going to work with. It consists of four elements, A, B, 3, and D. So these are the elements of the set A. And we are going to compute the power set. So this kind of script P is the notation we use to denote the power set of the set A. And the power set is defined, the power set of a set is defined as a set itself that contains every subset of the set A. So we need to write down a set that contains every possible subset of the set A. So this is the power set, and this is what we're going to do. Okay, so how do we compute this? So first of all, the first thing I always write down when I write down a power set for a set is I write down the empty set, because the empty set is a subset of A. Because every element of the empty set is in A. This is true. It's true in kind of a trivial and strange way because there are no elements of the empty set, but it still meets the definition of a subset because every element of the empty set is an element of A. It just so happens that there are no elements of the empty set, so that's never false. But the empty set is a subset of every set, so it has to be in our power set for A because it is a subset of A. So that's one element that we start off with. And then I like to start with listing all the single element subsets of A. So individually listing A, B, 3, and D. A is a subset, and by A I mean little a, is a subset of the set A. B is a subset of A. 3 is a subset of A. And D is a subset of A because every element in this set is in the set A, etc. So I list all of the single element sets. Now we need to list all of the two element sets. So there's a lot more of these. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. There are six two-element su subsets. So we list all those, just all the combinations of how you can pick two out of the four things. And I list all the three elements. So there are four of the three of these. These are all the different ways that I can choose three elements out of the four things. I'm sorry, there are there are four. I thought there were four. And then finally we choose four things out of the set of four. And there's only one way to do that, A, B, 3, and D. And this concludes our power set. So the power set contains a lot more things than the original thing. And the easiest way to write all this down is to start with the empty set and with the set A. So that's one thing to check is A is always in it as well. And then in between, fill in all the ways that you can choose one, all the ways you can choose two, and all the ways that you can choose three. And if there are more things, you'd have to have, um, you know, choose four, choose five, choose six, etc. But for this particular example, that's where we stop. With the combinations, it's a little hard to keep track of, you know, how many things that you need to list in each of these. And actually, the, the good way to think about this is with this notation up here, this n choose k. Given n things, where n in this case is four, because there's four things I can choose from, choosing k of them, we use this notation, n choose k, and the number of ways that I can do that is given by this equation, n factorial over k factorial times n minus k factorial. So when you're trying to figure out, you know, how many sets of length 2 can I write down, you can actually plug into this equation and figure that out. For instance, how many ways can I choose 1 out of the 4 things? That was this, this right here. Well, there's 4, and that's why there's 4 things here. How many ways can I choose two out of the four things? That number is six. If you actually plug into this equation up here, you get the number six, and that's why I had six sets listed here. Similarly, for four choose three, there are four ways to do that. If you actually plug n equals four and k equals three into this equation, you'll get the number four, and that's why I had four sets listed here. And then finally, four choose four. If you plug into this equation, you get one. And that's why I have just one set here. So for small sets, you know, A with not too many elements, it's not too hard to write all these down and, and just double check that you didn't miss any. But if A was a larger set, trying to write down all of the pairs of two might be a much longer. And when you're done, you could just double check your answer to make sure that you at least wrote down the total number of things and make sure that they match this calculation. So that ends our example of computing a power set. It's not hard, just a little tedious, 
based on the length of A, and the power set is just a set itself whose elements consist of all subsets of A.